Doing well, sir. How about yourself? Uh, doing good. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate it. Now, I know it was only one game, but you are one of a very few select group of Buckeyes who got to play against Urban Meyer, or at least against a team coached by him, in that national championship game. I know it's a painful memory, but describe what that defense was like when you saw it on the field. Obviously, it was a pretty fast defense out there. I'll tell you what, that Urban Meyer defense was, uh, man, it was like going up against a, a tidal wave, man. We just couldn't do anything, you know, a tidal wave and not being able to swim. I mean, if you've ever been in the pool and you can't swim, it's it's uh, it's pretty difficult. Uh, and that particular day, they had our number. The great thing is I'm extremely excited because that same defense of uh, mindset that that Florida Gators team had in 2006, I can already see it in our Buckeye defense and those silver bullets this year. So I'm extremely excited and ready and happy that he's fighting on our side. On the phone with Roy Hall, former OSU wide receiver here, joining us on the Buckeye Show. Now, Roy, obviously, as a receiver, you kind of have a different way of looking at a quarterback because he's your bread and butter. I mean, if he doesn't get you the ball the right way, obviously there's going to be a problem. So let's look at it from that aspect. Braxton Miller, what do you think he needs to improve on coming into year two? You know what? I think I think Braxton – I don't – improvements, you know, come every year. You know, they, they try and talk about he's an athlete. Uh, I even heard Coach Meyer say now um, he's an athlete playing quarterback. Last year they, he said that he said he was just an athlete taking the snaps. Uh, but I think just his growth will come in his leadership. I think um, that will come with experience. You know, I just want him to allow the game to come to him. I, I You know, I saw it when Troy was playing quarterback. You know, he tried to tweak certain things and change his game to – um, appease the crowd and, 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 and deal with what the media was telling him um, that he needed to do to be a better quarterback. But Troy was a quarterback. Braxton Miller is a quarterback. And, you know, he needs to be a quarterback in his leadership. Um, he'll make plays with his legs, but he has a strong enough arm and an accurate enough arm to get the job done. So he just needs to let, you know, be confident in what he can do and allow the game to come to him. You mentioned playing with Troy Smith. Braxton Miller is a guy that is going to get those comparisons just because of the fact he can throw the ball, but he also makes him work with his feet. Do you think he can ascend to that Heisman Trophy level that Troy Smith got to when you were playing with him? You know what? I think the thing that uh, Braxton has on this side is is the experience of Coach Urban Meyer. By having that, that spread offense, you know, we saw Tim Tebow win the Heisman under Coach Meyer, so it can be done in that particular offense. Um, I think that if, if he works as hard as they say he's working, as I know he's working, um, you know, I think Braxton can get to that level. He's already, you know, one of those bottom tier Heisman um, um, in contention for a Heisman right now, just on some people's list. But I think it just will come with his growth and his experience. We win some of these big games down the stretch, Michigan State and Wisconsin. I think those games are back to back. We win those games and, and they'll be talking about them. You know, obviously this year we won't play in a bowl game, but I, I definitely think that Braxton, Braxton can can um, ascend to that level. Now, around your neck, Roy Hall, you have a lot of gold pants. The last year the streak was broken, the victory streak against Michigan. How disappointing was that for you? I mean, I know obviously you know what those guys go through, so you appreciate it probably more than the average Buckeye fan, or in a different way than the average Buckeye fan, I'll say. But just on a personal level for you, how disappointing was it to see the streak end last year? You know what, whenever you lose to that team up north, it's disappointing. You know, they're terrible. They don't deserve to even be in the same stadium as us. Um, it just happens to be that we're, you know, a, a state right across the border. Um, you know, I wish they would just pack up and, and move them to the other side of Canada or something. But <laughs> since we had to play them, um, you know, I was, it was unfortunate that we lost. It just kind of was one of those seasons. You know, we started off the season in the spring. We lost Coach Trussell. Um, Coach Fickle did a great job throughout the season managing um, and doing some damage control. Uh, we lost, you know, too many games last year, and then obviously we lost that game. So it was extremely disappointing. It was kind of like the cherry on top, like, well, it's just one of those seasons. But, again, that's why the 2012 season is going to be that much sweeter. They got Michigan ranked ahead of us, and they're supposed to be great. They're going to lose to Alabama and start falling down the ranks, and then when we get them <laughs> in November – um, we'll be ready to go and start that streak again. Now, let me, I, I got to stop you there and ask you this because I know, which, I mean, you've come out strong and saying they need to move. You don't want to, you hate to even have to play them. Let me ask you this, though, because it always gets debated around here between Buckeye fans. Do you want Michigan to be undefeated and just top of their game and then have them get crushed when they lose to Ohio State? Or 
do you almost root against them every game? I grew up watching Ohio State sadly lose Michigan games, so I want to see Michigan now lose any time they're on a football field. Where do you come down on that? Listen to me. Um, if somebody came into your house and stole your new flat screen TV that you were going to use to watch this Ohio State-Michigan game, <laughs> would you yes. rather them just get in trouble one time or every time that you saw them, you would just say, hey, man, you, I, you owe me some money for a TV every time I see you because you took my TV and I couldn't even watch the Ohio State-Michigan game. You know, you want to see those guys go under all the time. I mean, I, I'm not rooting for Michigan to go undefeated. I don't need them to go undefeated. All I need them to do is they don't even need to show I really wish they wouldn't show up. <laughs> That's what I wish. But since they do show up, they're going to get beat anyway. You know, I don't even know why they – I don't know why their fans show up. I just have no idea – um, you know, so I'm not rooting for them during the year. If they're 0 and 0 and 12 when they face us, they'll, they'll be 0 and 13 at the end. I hope we run the score and score 100 <laughs> points on those guys. It really doesn't matter. You Let know, me tell you, just, you know, Roy. I got to tell you, I know you're doing a lot of good things, and I want to get to them in a second. But I got to tell you, man, if you could just teach a class at Ohio State to future Buckeyes, this is how you win popularity contests with the fans. What you're saying is right on line with what people love to hear, man. So I, I'm enjoying this. This is great. Hey, man, you know it's. I'm but it's real though. It's not like I don't think you're. You know, I don't think you're saying it. It's real for you. How can you even wrap your mind around rooting for the team up? No, you can't. I want to see them have any success for what you know. They already try and come in and take our athletes from Ohio. They're just doing all these tactics, and you know, I just, I just, I just really, I really don't have time for it. So I, I don't root for them during the season. I don't root for them ever. Um, I don't even like watching Desmond Howard on ESPN. I just it's just it's just all bad. Man. So give me real quick last question on that because I'm loving this prediction for the Alabama Michigan game this Saturday. They're gonna lose. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't really. They're gonna lose. They're gonna lose. Alabama's gonna 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 uh, put that crimson tide um, on them. They're not scarlet and gray, but it's a, uh, you know that that crimson is a form of red. It's a shade. of It's red. in the same it's color dark. family, sure. You know, if you get on your, your your Mac computer or whatever type of computer you have, and go into you know, you create a little document and play with the colors a little bit. Crimson comes out of scarlet. So, <laughs> Same box uh, of crayons, right? Right. So I'm 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 rocking and rolling with uh with crimson with the crimson tide roll Just, tide. There you go for this weekend. The, give me one for final. This weekend. <laughs> Roy Hall, former OSU wide receiver, joins us here on the fan. Tell me about your work with the Driven Foundation. You and Antonio Smith doing some good things there. Talk about it. You know what? The Driven Foundation is an organization that uh, I established my rookie year with the Colts. It actually was something that um, got an idea from Peyton Manning to, to give back, and this is how you do it as a football player, and it's not just about football. Uh, we obviously established some football camps, but now we just have different programs from a mentoring, mentoring program uh, to food outreaches. Uh, over the past three years, we've given away over 200,000 pounds of free food to the inner city of Columbus. Just this past weekend, we partnered with Columbus Christian Center Church, um, and, and and our pastor, Dr. Forbes, and get, gave away over 10,000 free school supplies. I'm talking 1,000 book bags full of supplies uh, to the Columbus community. Um, so we're versatile in, in, in that aspect. We're kind of like special teams player, players for the Buckeyes. We're all over the field. We're all over the place, and we're all over the community just trying to give as much as we can. That's excellent stuff, and definitely, uh, you know, it's good work. It's good to see you guys getting involved in the community, too. Uh, you know, obviously there are a lot of players that have come through here and, and done that. There are a lot of players that haven't, um, that have made mistakes. So it's good to see you guys being involved and staying involved in the community. Roy Hall, former Ohio State wide receiver, joining us on the Buckeye Show. Roy, anytime, man. We would love to talk to you, and we'll definitely, when Michigan Week comes around, man, we'll, we'll have you back on at, at the very least, and we'll uh, throw out some more Wolverine hatred. How about that? Oh, yeah, I would love it. <laughs> I would love it. Um, you know, Antonio Smith, uh, my partner, he just came out with his new book. It's called Waiting to Fail. And, um, you know, Michigan is the opposite. They're waiting to succeed against us, you know, because they will not have any success um, against us um, ever um, if I have anything to do with it. Now, I can't play on the field, but you know, <laughs> Michigan Week, call me up. You know, you can bring a camera in and follow me around. I don't eat anything yellow or maize, or anything that resembles it. I don't even use the bathroom because it's too, <laughs> too close to the color of their helmets. I, I hold it for the entire week, man. So just give me a call, man. I look forward to it. I will, but I will not follow you uh, at any public restroom after that because I'm imagining that's got to be bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Roy. I appreciate it, man. Hey, man, we'll talk soon. Thanks again. Thank you. God bless.